After the events of Secret Wars, Peter Parker returned to New York City with a brand new costume created by an alien technology. Now in his sleek all-black suit, Peter Parker balances his personal life and superheroics as he swings through the city as the amazing friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Quentin Beck was once a state-of-the-art visual effects specialist and stuntman until he realized he could make far more money using his skills as a costume criminal. Now he stalks the streets as the enigmatic Mysterio. What happens next? Find out on today's review of Symbiote Spider-Man, the miniseries, by Peter David and Greg Land. Excelsior! Ah! Venom's not here today, man. Welcome, boils and ghouls, to the Carnage Flood. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog and today we're going to take a slight departure from Carnage, we're going to take a slight departure from Venom and we're actually going to focus on, at least to us, at the, for the longest time up until recent history that we, you know, was revealed and stuff, uh, who the first host of the uh, symbiote was, at least first human host, uh, which was Peter Parker. Uh, Peter Parker, back in the early days of, or I would say like 80s, like mid 80s and stuff, or like early to mid 80s, and then going up until the late 80s when Venom first appeared, Spider-Man did show up with a new costume. Uh, he went to the Secret Wars, and uh, over there he saw Thor and Hulk come out of a room. Their costumes were repaired, and he said, hey, how'd that happen? And they were like, oh, just go in this room back there. There's a machine, and then it'll repair your costume for you. So, of course, Peter Parker, with his luck, goes into the room, picks the wrong machine, and frees what we later found out is an alien life form called a symbiote uh, from a planet called Clintar, which may not even be a planet anymore, as we're learning. Um, and it turns out that this life form was uh, exiled from its home planet, and uh, because it acted differently than all the other symbiotes on its planet. At least that's the earlier, you know, version of the character of, of the symbiote. Uh, but then Spider-Man put the costume on. It mimicked his current costume and then slowly transformed and became the black costume that we all know. And uh, yeah, it was really awesome time. Uh, you know, uh, at least interesting stories for Spider-Man because uh, he started acting erratic. It was really neat. He started, you know, developing a little bit more of an attitude and stuff. And you saw that handled really well, I thought, in the 90s animated cartoon because they didn't have a lot of time to, like, you know, show Peter, like, you know, becoming a little bit more aggressive. And that's what, what was happening was, like, this suit was accessing his, you know, his emotions and stuff. It was, like, bonding with them and it was, like, learning from him. And as it was learning from him, it was triggering different emotions. And so when he got angry, he would get stuck in anger mode for a while. And then when he got, you know, excited about something uh, or, you know, it was, like, like, you know, shooting off at the mouth, that would run a little too long and stuff. And uh, I, I like that. I thought that was pretty cool and it added some things and unique things to the character. But then what started happening is then he tried to get rid of it at one point. It came back to him, unbeknownst to him, because he, he made a cloth costume of the black suit. And I think this is one of the last issues he had the black suit in because he realized it is an alien life form. Um, and it's not just alien technology like he thought it was, uh, like a self-repairing suit or anything. It's actually something way worse. And it was, uh, and it was you know, just playing on his emotions and, and messing with his head and it was ruining some of his relationships at the time Peter Parker was dating Felicia Hardy black cat um, and uh, and that was kind of the, the love interest at the time it was post you know um, Gwen Stacy's death and before he really committed to Mary Jane he was kind of uh, flirting with and, and kind of hooking up with black cat uh, even though she wasn't too crazy about Peter Parker but she was into Spider-Man and uh, and so what was really cool about that time was that Peter David was writing Spider-Man during those years, uh, one of the many writers that was writing Spider-Man during those years. Uh, but I really liked his run with, uh, you know, everything he did with Spider-Man in the black costume. And then ultimately, you know, Spider-Man getting rid of the black costume for real and it ending up on Eddie Brock. So first he went to the Fantastic Four, had them separated from him, and they locked it in a, uh, you know, like a tube. And then it broke out and then it rebonded with them. And it started, you know, it started slow at first. It, it, it replaced his cloth suit. So Peter thought he was just putting his cloth suit back on, but really he was putting on the alien symbiote. And then even when he fell asleep at night it would take his body for a ride it would bond with him uh, while because he would just hang it over like a, a, a chair nearby his bed uh, like it was a cloth costume and it would come to life grab him and take him out into the night and uh, he would go on adventures unconscious you know so like the suit was doing it all and uh, and it got him into a lot more trouble and it ruined some of his relationship with his friends and his family and people who trusted him as spider-man and that's eventually when he was like all right enough is enough i found it it came back it's creeping me out i got to get rid of it for good and he goes on the church and rips it off of him with the church bell and then eventually goes to eddie brock so in that time though while he had the costume um and he before he got rid of it and you know the first time with the fantastic four um there was a story there that Peter David, I guess, always wanted to tell, or maybe Marvel recently asked him, hey, do you want to tell a story set 
during the time period of Peter Parker with the black costume. And so he did. And what he did was he came up with Symbiote Spider-Man, a five issue miniseries with Greg Land as the artist. And Greg Land, I'm not always a big fan of his stuff. Um, you know, I know he like, you know, likes to use a lot of reference art and trace a lot and stuff like that. But I still feel like with a good inker and a good colorist, uh, the book at least looks good and it's clean storytelling. And it's like, yeah, hey, you know what? I mean, um, however he gets the you know art done i guess um is always something we can debate and question uh but at least the, this felt like it had a nice flow to it and the panel and layouts were really nice and the storyline worked really well and peter david is a legend i love his writing so um yeah they made a good team on this book i feel uh and i think uh, what was it jay lestine was the inker and frank damata was the uh, colorist on the book and uh, yep, that's who it was. So uh, so yeah, so this is more of a, you know, I got the variant cover because anything with Gwen Stacy, I usually buy. So I got the variant cover for number one, but uh, I got the, you get a better uh, image there. It's basically a Spider-Man versus Mysterio story because obviously they were gearing up for, you know, Far From Home. And so, uh, you know, they're like, we need a Myster another Mysterio story out there. And then, you know, why don't we set it during this time period, Peter David, and can you come up with a story for it? I'm guessing, or maybe Peter David went to Marvel and said, I have a story with Mysterio. We can tell, like, let me do it. This story was really awesome. I really liked it. I'm not going to go in depth. This isn't going to be a discussion video. This is more or less going to be like a broad review of it because I don't want to give every little thing away, but I will probably talk about some spoilers. But uh, I do have some digital codes. We already gave out the first two issues in digital form. So throughout this episode, you're going to see the, you know, the codes for issues three, four, and five pop up. And we'll start right now. Boom, there's issue three. First person to put that code in gets the issue, the digital comic uh, of issue three. And then throughout this episode, you'll also get, you know, uh, four and five. I'll just put the codes up randomly while I'm talking. So um, anyway, the storyline. What is the story? It's set, I think, right after uh, Peter Parker's The Spectacular Spider-Man issue 91 or 92. It's like right around that era of, uh, of the history of the character. And Peter Parker doesn't know yet that the suit is an actual alien life form. He just thinks it's alien technology. And he is dating uh, Felicia Hardy also in the storyline. So when the story picks up, uh, that's where he is in his life. He's dating her. He's kind of abandoned uh, Aunt May a couple too many times. And they're coming up on the anniversary of Uncle Ben's death. And so Peter is like now like, all right, I want to open up more to, um, you know, to Felicia Hardy. I want to share more about my personal life with her. So he decides to take her to the cemetery and kind of introduce her in a way. It's kind of morbid a little bit, but, uh, but they, you know, they don't have normal lives, either one of them, but he, he brings her and says, Hey, this is my uncle Ben. He's the reason I do all this. And, uh, and then, uh, Peter sees, you know, Mysterio and he runs off. And then when he runs off, he, he kind of ditches Felicia Hardy. And while she's alone, she's like, Peter, get back here. And then aunt May shows up and is like, who, Peter, are you screaming for my nephew? And then she goes, Oh, who are you? And the two of them meet. And so, you know, that was like an interaction. We never really got too much of the comics. And so she gets to meet Aunt May and talk to Aunt May and learn more about Peter Parker. And she kind of starts to like him on a serious level, not just like a hookup, like they were hooking up. Uh, she's starting to like him a little bit on a serious level. Uh, but meanwhile, you know, Spider-Man, he's taken down Mysterio and he's uh, done it, you know, getting pretty aggressive. The suit is like feeding off of his emotions. And so uh, the book opens up and it has him just mopping the floor with Mysterio, just throwing him all over the place. And then it flashes back and it shows Quentin Beck talking to his friend Johnny, who works for the Kingpin. And Johnny's kind of like, yeah, we, you know, we were in college together. I'm a scientist now. I work for the Kingpin. Uh, his name's Wilson Fisk. You know, uh, obviously, he's like, he's because, you know, at first Mysterio's like, yeah, isn't it, you know, you work for the Kingpin. Don't act like you're high and mighty. And he's like, hey, his name's Wilson Fisk. He's a businessman, you know. And then uh, Mysterio's like, fine. He's like, well, I'm Quentin Beck Mysterio, you know, threat to the universe. And, and you know, uh, I, I bring fear to everyone. And Johnny kind of pokes at him, uh, fun at him. And he's like, no, you don't, man. You don't actually, nobody fears you. And every time you fight Spider-Man, he beats you. And even the power pack, I think, can beat you. And Quentin Beck's like, no, no, they can't. And of course, later on in the comics, we do know that the power pack do actually beat up Mysterio. So Johnny's kind of mentioning, hey, you're kind of a joke. You're in over your head. Maybe don't do the super villain thing. Maybe try to figure out something else, create your own business, start your own special effects business, whatever it is. And Mysterio's like, no, screw you. I'm going to go rob this bank and uh, I got a great plan. And then so Mysterio goes and does that. And what happens is he gives a gas mask to the lady who's working the counter and then she's with a note that says put this on she puts like kind of vicky Valeish from batman uh she puts the mask on and everybody else gets poisoned um just knocked out just knockout gas and then he comes in he says all right like open the safe get me in there i'm gonna get the money i'm gonna get out of here but then some guard that was in the bathroom while quentin beck came in and hit gas everywhere 
he was he comes out and he aims his gun at Quentin, fires it, Quentin dodges it, uh, you know, using Mysterio, you know, teleportation and, and mysticism, and uh, and then takes down the cop. And when he turns around, the woman who admitted to, uh, you know, Quentin Beck that she had a son or a little girl, I think, and a husband, uh, she is shot in the chest and she dies because of his actions and because he came into this bank and uh, this, you know, armed guard shot at him and he dodged it and it hit her and... Uh, he almost learns an Uncle Ben lesson in this. He actually goes back to his place and he's like, I, I am, I'm a screw up. And he's like, he didn't take you know credit for the robbery. He left all the money there and he just disappears. And uh, they're like, yeah, all we know is someone came in with, you know, the cops were like, we know someone came in with like smoke and knockout gas, but that was it. And then they must have ran away because they didn't take the money. So we don't know who it was or who was behind us, but we'll we'll find out because the only witness, uh, you know, the cop, he got knocked out. So he took a head injury. I don't think he remembered. It was Mysterio. And then the woman, she died. So, uh, so Quentin Beck's like, you know what? I'm done. And he's like, I'm going to go on. Uh, on the news or something and and say that I don't, you know, uh, stand for violence. I don't want people to die. Um, and I, I'm going to just turn a new leaf. I'm going to go open up my own special effects company. You know, like uh, I'll get money some other way. I'll get a loan or something. And I'm I'm done. I'm, I'm out of this line of work. And that's where the story starts. And I'm like, wow, this is really neat. Like to know that Mysterio, maybe at one point because of a horrible mistake, he would have gone the other way. But what happens? Peter Parker. When Peter Parker visited his uncle's uh, gravesite, like I said, he saw Quentin Beck. It was pure coincidence. When he sees Quentin Beck, though, he goes, oh my God, Quentin Beck knows I'm Spider-Man. So at this point, Peter Parker, now driven more angry by the suit being attached to him, he is paranoid and he thinks that Quentin Beck actually knows Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And then he goes over to the grave that Quentin was standing at and sees the woman's uh, tombstone and finds out that that was the lady who died in the, the you know, in the uh, robbery and puts two and two together and goes, oh, he must have been the one to try to do that robbery and then left, uh, you know, for whatever reason. Well, I don't know why he didn't take the money, but uh, he's he might be responsible for this lady's death. So he's like, enough is enough. He knows I'm Peter Parker and he killed this woman. I'm going after him. And so he shows up at Mysterio's hideout back at the beginning of the book and mops the place with him. And so that's where the first issue ends is that uh, Mysterio says, no, it was my sister. He was like trying to come up with a lie to say, because Spider-Man's like, who was that woman? You know, why were you at her tombstone? You know, why were you, why were you there in the cemetery? And he's like, look, my sister died. That's it. And it takes Peter a minute to go, oh, oh crap. Maybe I am overreacting here. He's like looking at the suit. He's like, what's going on? What's happening? And then Mysterio you know, is like, I gotcha. You know, he used that second of, uh, of you know, moment hesitation from Spider-Man. He used it to his advantage and he gets away and blows up the building in the process almost killing Spider-Man. So then these two are now locked in. And then when he sees Spider-Man leaving, he sees Spider-Man change. He doesn't see who Peter Parker is because he's too far away, but he does see the suit melt off of him and become regular clothes. And then when he sees that, he's like, I got to figure out what that suit is. So throughout the series, he kind of like blackmails Black Cat into stealing a piece of the suit uh, because he shows like, hey, I know where you got your bad luck powers from. They came from the Kingpin. And if Spider-Man finds out, and I know that you two have been close lately, if he finds out that this is you know where you got your powers from, he's probably not going to trust you anymore. So she decides, okay, fine. I'll, burn, I'll get a piece of that suit. I'll give it to you and you can study it. So Mysterio takes that suit, brings it to his friend Johnny and, uh, and studies it at the Kingpin's, you know, hideout uh, or is at his, you know, headquarters or whatever, unbeknownst to Kingpin. He doesn't know that he's there. And, uh, and they find out a little bit more about the suit. And then the suit ends up bonding with Quentin Beck and turning him into like a symbiote, uh, you know, Mysterio. Uh, but he's only enhanced his powers. The suit only enhanced him slightly. And I, and for whatever reason, it doesn't want to go back to Spider-Man. Like Spider-Man shows up and tries to fight him, but the, the, the symbiote piece won't go back to Peter. It's almost acting independently, uh, maybe maybe even sampling to see if other hosts are worth it, you know, and, and maybe that Peter isn't end-all be-all uh, of hosts. Maybe there's someone else out there that can treat the suit better or be more suited for the suit. So I don't know. Maybe that's the reason they don't really say, uh, because in this storyline, you don't get the, the symbiote's voice in Peter's head. It's trying to keep its distance. It's trying not to let Peter know that it's a living life form right now because it's starting to see the paranoia build up in Peter Parker. Um, and then meanwhile, in Peter Parker's personal life, he keeps, you know, disappointing Aunt May and he's like misses like a breakfast with her and he misses another opportunity to, to see her. And uh, and also he's blown off uh, Felicia Hardy. And then even worse is that the suit as he's asleep at night, the suit, you know, gets the piece cut off of it and Black Cat goes and gives it to Mysterio. The suit goes and bonds on Peter and he's asleep and it brings him out to go fight, uh, you know, Mysterio in the Kingpin's hideout, um, you know. And so Peter has no idea he's even there. And that's what I liked is there's some parts of this book where the black suited Spider-Man is fighting Mysterio or other villains and they have, you know, Peter has no idea that he's there. Uh, even to the point where there's one guy named Hard Rock, uh, who's this guy that Mysterio kind of recruits. And he's a guy named Alan who was 
born a mutant with like, you know, kind of like Luke Cage, like his skin is impenetrable and he's like super strong. So he goes and fights Spider-Man, but it's not Spider-Man. It's just the black suit wearing Peter. And what it does is it, it leaves Peter on the ground, take, you know, like leaves him there and then goes over and bonds with hard rock, goes into his mouth and explodes his head and kills him. Um, so yeah, you see that the suit is acting really erratic and it's killing people. And then it goes back, bonds on Peter, takes him home. And then he wakes up none the wiser the next morning, has no idea that he's uh, gone through this. And that is interesting because like I said, we talk about the symbiote when it's bond with Eddie Brock and how right now it's like erasing his memories or it messed with his memories um, throughout the course of them being together. This feels like Peter David's kind of taking a page from that where he's like, and maybe that was like initial intention of the suit was like, hey, let's not make this thing a hero. Let's not make it good. Let's make it lean more towards doing bad things. Or maybe it's just like a kid with a new toy and it's just seeing how much it can push, you know, the human host that it has or whatever. Uh, but it does seem very devious and it kills obviously to save Peter, but still kills. Um, and then it puts Peter back in his bed and he has no idea that there is someone died uh, because the suit protected him. He has no idea. Uh, so I, I thought that was neat. And I like the addition of characters like Hard Rock. I think the human fly was in one of the issues. Um, and then like Electro shows up in one of the issues where they're like at a, a play for like the, the musical Cats. And Spider-Man shows up and stops Electro and stuff. And, and I thought that was kind of fun. Um, but then, you know, obviously in the end, um, you have a Mysterio, symbiote Mysterio, fighting a symbiote Spider-Man and Black Cat kind of in the middle, and she's trying to get through to Peter Parker, uh, but uh, it's not Peter Parker. He's asleep, he's unconscious, held unconscious by the suit. And so when this, when she goes, look, Peter, or, you know, or you know, she's like whispering to him, she's like, let him, like, let it go. Like, he's strangling Mysterio, and he's going to kill kill Mysterio, and he's like, you know, the black suit is going to kill him. Uh, he got the, he basically got the strand of symbiote back, too, because uh, Mysterio starts using fire, and obviously the suit doesn't like fire. And so it's like, all right, screw that bad host. This guy shoots fire. It's going to hurt us. We're just going to die if we bond to this guy because he's going to keep shooting fire out to try to hurt Spider-Man. So it ultimately goes back to Spider-Man and then that, you know, rebonds with itself, brings itself to full strength. Spider-Man's able to stop Mysterio. Then he's choking him like he's going to kill them or kill him. And uh, and then Black Cat shows up. It's like, please don't do this. You know, he's you're better than this. Don't, don't let him get to you this way. And uh, that's when, she, you know, he turns back. It's not Peter. He's unconscious, remember? And he knocks black cat away and it that's kind of like that and the actions that happen this is like the beginning of the decline of the relationship and why ultimately probably in the comics they don't end up together is because uh you know because of some of the actions in here i think peter david was like hey you know what we can go back and add more tension between the two of them and show even more so why they didn't work as a couple and it's because of actions peter does in this book but he doesn't even know he's doing some of the time sometimes he does and he kind of talks coldly to her um, but other times he doesn't. In the end, though, he does. They do kind of. They're, they're still together. They don't break up in this, obviously, because that happens later in the continuity where they, you know, part ways. Um, but this book does end with a, a defeated Mysterio, at least not a killed Mysterio, obviously, but a defeated one. Um, and then also, uh, you know, Peter talked to Con Aunt May and being like, hey, I'm sorry, I, I didn't get to breakfast. Uh, you know, I, I meant to be there, and I'm so sorry. And Aunt May just hangs up on him, and he's like, May, it, uh, May, and you kind of see that he's even putting their relationship at Jeopardy now with this suit. Um, and then meanwhile, Black Cat's sitting on the couch and her secret's, you know, safe. He, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't learn in the story that uh, her powers came from Kingpin. Uh, he doesn't learn that she took a piece of the suit or anything like that. He doesn't learn any of that stuff. And she's sitting there on the couch as Peter's talking about May and she's staring at the suit and the suit's hanging over the chair like cloth, um, but it's, its eyes are like looking back right at her. And, uh, and while that's happening, you know, she's getting the sense of dread while Peter is like, you know, upset that he let down his, his Aunt May. So, um, so that's kind of where the book ends. And what I like about this is that the, at the end, it says that uh, Symbiote Spider-Man will return. And obviously that's because uh, he's going to get a one shot in Absolute Carnage. So that's why I wanted to talk about these five issues uh, now before we start getting further into Absolute Carnage. Uh, not only to talk and tell Peter Parker's story with him and the symbiote, but also to you know mention this series in particular because it's going to play into Absolute Carnage later. Because obviously that means Quentin Beck bonded with a symbiote. That means Quentin Beck has a codex in them. And uh, that's something that's added to the continuity thanks to this miniseries from Peter David and something that they're already going to play into 
an absolute carnage. Uh, it's so great. I mean, this series just ended this week, and, our, and they already planned it so far ahead. Uh, and I'm glad they got Peter David to do it because I really like this series, and it feels more genuine when you're adding to continuity when the original writer that wrote during that era comes back to add something. Kind of like when Jerry Conway comes back and does stuff with Spider-Man. I'm like, yeah, I kind of buy into that more because these are guys, these are legends that worked on the books um, and did really great stuff in the past and continue to do great stuff in the future uh, or in the present, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, and they probably will in the future as well. So um, anyway, these series, if you picked up the digital codes, I had all three of them pop up as I was talking. Uh, this was, you know, I wanted to keep it around 20, 25 minutes because I knew there's a lot to talk about, but I didn't want to do a full in-depth discussion. I just want to talk about some of the stuff I liked in this book and the pacing I thought was really great. The art was really great. Um, you know, like I, if even for like Greg Lane, like I said, I kind of rail against them sometimes, but the layouts were just so good and I was engaged. I really was locked in and it was really neat seeing uh, just a lost chapter from Peter Parker's life in this era. Uh, just so awesome. And to know that it's going to tie into the uh, Absolute Carnage series is even better because, I, like I said, now that means Quentin Beck has a codex in him. And I can't wait to see after what he just went through with Wolverine in like Dead Man Logan, where, you know, Wolverine from the alternate timeline was trying to kill Mysterio. Um, it's so great to see him now, like, uh, you know, as the person he is now where he's like, he's kind of doesn't want to be Mysterio and he keeps trying not to be, but he keeps getting roped into it and everything. And uh, it's, it'll be interesting to see that kind of mirrors how he was in this. He didn't want to do bad after that woman died. He tried to be on the right path, but then Spider-Man tormented him so much, which it wasn't Spider-Man. It was the black suit tormented him so much that it pushed him right into evil supervillain territory where he might have got out of the life and walked away uh, that was shot to hell when uh, spider-man and the black suit tormented him throughout the series and pushed him to the point of wanting to get revenge and that's what made him appealing to the piece of the suit that was you know felt a little rejected or you know or looking for other hosts uh, to sample out other hosts whatever it was doing we don't know its full motivation um, but it does bond with them and uh, now infected him, and now he has a codex in him. So I can't wait to see where they go with this, uh, but it was really great. And I think Peter David is also writing that one shot, and hopefully Greg Land draws it. I don't remember who the artist is on the one shot, uh, but that would be a nice like bookend to this, you know, to have all six of them and maybe put all of them in a trade paperback together one day. But I think just these five are going to be in their own trade, and then they'll probably trade the Absolute Carnage stuff in some other way. Uh, but let me know what you think. Did you read this series? If you didn't, I highly recommend it because it's really good Peter Parker stuff. It's really good Black Cat stuff. And uh, it's really good Mysterio stuff as well. And uh, also Black Costume stuff. So it's a, it's a winning package and I can't recommend it enough. I would say if I was reviewing this, I would give this whole series probably a 4.5 out of 5. I liked it that much. Uh, it was near perfect for me. Um, there was a couple little things I had issues with, but they're not even worth mentioning. But they did kind of take away some of the points of the overall run but still loved it 4.5 out of 5 darn near perfect in my eyes so let me know what you think of it down below if you read it and if you got the digital comics let me know down below if you read those issues what you thought of them and which issue you got and we'll continue our conversation as always down there thanks so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace